right, we're now to the side four of Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Mm-hmm. Say what? She was quickly becoming convinced that the Solenskys were all crazy. And now she was afraid she might catch it too. Maybe she'd become crazy just being around them. Well, down in the street, Wayne and Diane were just as worried. They knew that if Adam got too close to the lights, he'd blow up some more. And he seemed really interested in the lights. They had to find something that would be more interesting to him. And then Wayne spotted just the thing. It was an ice cream truck. Adam couldn't resist ice cream. Everybody knew that. Uh, who can drive an ice cream truck really fast? Wayne asked. Marshall Brooks volunteered. So Dr. Sterling shook his head. He was worried about something. You know, Wayne, if Adam gets much bigger, I don't think we stand a chance of controlling him. Diane answered for both of them. Don't worry, Dr. Sterling. We couldn't control him when he was the right size. (laughs) Nobody found that very comforting. Now, Mandy thought Nick's idea was pretty flaky, but she didn't have anything better in mind. And together, the two... Together, the two of them tugged at the threads at the bottom of Adam's pocket until they found a loose one. It unraveled quickly, leaving a big hole in the bottom of Adam's pocket, and the next thing they knew, they had yards of thread that looked like rope. And then their moment came. Adam stumbled on his shoelace, and he fell forward and landed on his hands and knees. Nick held his breath. Mandy closed her eyes. They both grabbed the rope tightly and jumped out of Adam's pocket. And in a split second, they were suspended over an abandoned convertible. It was perfect. Go for it, Nick yelled. And they both let go and landed safely in the car. Nick was in the driver's seat. Mandy was right next to him. Get going, Nick, she instructed. It was one thing to say, but quite another to do, because Nick didn't have the vaguest idea how to drive a car. He started pushing buttons and the windshield wipers worked, but... So did the spritzer on the windshield, and the stereo started blasting, and the top of the convertible began closing, and, Oh, play cars, Adam said, and he grabbed the car and began running it around in circles. Bring, 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 he said as he played with the car, and Nick and Mandy reached for their seat belts. Cars were fun, but airplanes were even better. And Adam lifted the car into the air and up and down and around and around and Nick and Mandy were turning green. And on the ground, Wayne yelled into the walkie-talkie, Where's the ice cream truck? We're set, Marshall Brooks informed them. Then Wayne looked up to see what was happening and it wasn't good news. No, wait, he told Marshall Brooks. Adam had put the car down right on top of one of the big electric signs, and Nick and Mandy were 60 feet above the street, and the car looked like it was about to fall off its perch. The car teetered to the left, and Mandy and Nick leaned right, and the car shifted backward, and Nick and Mandy leaned forward, and the car tipped forward, and Nick and Mandy froze. And that was all the shifting Mandy could face. She just had to get out of there. So she unclasped her seatbelt, opened the door, the car slipped radically to the right, and Mandy began to fall. Nick grabbed her hand, and he held on tight. And she held on tighter, and she began to pull him out of the car, too. So he hooked his foot around the steering wheel to stop his fall, and then he pulled with all his might, but he wasn't sure it would be enough. And slowly, he pulled Mandy back into the car. She shut the door and held on tight. And then the car shifted again, and Nick thought this would be the end. He, his foot hit the horn. Adam hadn't heard them screaming, but he did hear the horn, and he looked at the car. Uh-oh, fall down, he said. And that's just what the car did. It totally lost its balance and began to go, Adam said again, and this time he did something, though he caught the car in his hand. Nick and Mandy sighed with relief until Mandy put the car in his pocket. I mean Adam. I mean, yeah, Adam put the car in his pocket. He's always been possessive, Diane explained. Well, Wayne flicked the switch on the walkie-talkie. Let her roll, she said. And in that signal, Leon lights up and down the streets of Las Vegas went dark. And searchlights cut through the night. And they all focused on an ice cream truck. 
and Marshall Brooks turned the dial of the truck and familiar moves, music blurred out of the speakers. Marshall Brooks popped the clutch of the truck and the wheels spun and then caught. Ice cream! Adam boomed with delight and he started chasing after the ice cream truck and the race was on. And this is chapter 19. While well, Marshall Brooks was shaken, he could barely control his voice as he spoke into the walkie-talkie. Next thing I know, he grabs the wooden ice cream bar off the top of the truck, and what, what do you think he did with it? There, lying in the desert, was a big wooden ice cream bar. One large bite had been taken out of it. Well, that didn't work. What are we going to do now? Oh, we need to get to Adam, and we need to get to him to hold still. And then she thought for a minute. You remember how we finally got Adam to hold still for his picture taken? I sat there and held him. Wayne had an idea of what she was getting at, and he wasn't sure he liked it. Diane went on, he needs me. He needs me to tell him what he can do and what he can't do, what's okay and what's not. You know, to be a mommy. The problem is that as far as Adam is concerned, his mommy is somebody much bigger than he is. No way, Wayne said. It's a crazy idea. Diane wondered what was so bad about it. Wayne was always having crazy ideas. Why couldn't she have one? Well, Diane began to say just that to Wayne when there was a noise overhead and it was a helicopter. Wayne looked up at it and there was something awful familiar about the man in the rear. Could it be Dr. Hendrickson? Wayne hoped he was wrong and decided not to say anything. He had too much to do to worry about things he couldn't change, and besides, they didn't have a minute to waste. Preheating the lasers, Wayne, Dr. Sterling called. Wayne turned to Diane. He wanted to talk her out of this. I should be doing it, not you, he said. There's one thing every little kid knows, Wayne. Daddies mean fun, but mommies mean business. He couldn't argue with that. But this was dangerous. The machine had never meant to do anything like this. Too little power and you'll grow too slowly, like Adam. Too much power and... He remembered Dr. Hendrickson's blue crystal. He couldn't go on. I trust you, Wayne Selensky. Heaven help me, I do. She smiled at him then and it was a perfect smile. And besides, you're the smartest guy I know. And so Wayne smiled back, which says a lot about and she gave him a little kiss before he could finish the sentence, and the helicopter circled above them again, and this time there was no mistaking it. It was Dr. Hendrickson, and he had a giant gun of some kind pointed right at Adam. Time to get one, Wayne, Diane said. <clears throat> or it's time to get big, Wayne, Diane said. In the back of the helicopter, Dr. Hendrickson was getting the tranquilizer cannon ready. Hey, you're not actually going to use that thing on the kid, are you? Meyerson, the helicopter pilot, asked. Whatever it takes, Dr. Hendrickson said. Meyerson looked at Dr. Hendrickson carefully. He saw something in the man's eyes that he didn't trust. But he didn't know what to do about it. For now, he just kept on flying, circling the city of Las Vegas and the giant kid who was walking through it. That's not spotted something that he really wanted. It was a guitar, and it looked just like the one that Nick had. And Adam had fun with Nick's guitar, and he was sure he would have fun with this one, too. Of course, Nick's guitar was just a regular electric guitar, but this one was made of neon, and it was 30 feet long. Adam, sing, the two-year-old cried, and Nick and Mandy peered out of Adam's pocket, and Nick could tell. What was on Madam's mind? There was a lot of things that Nick didn't think that he was old enough for. Electrocution was one of them. Watching Adam get any bigger was another. And so Adam plucked the guitar from the wall of the Hard Rock Cafe, and the flexible tubes of light didn't break, and the guitar still glowed as he held it. But then Adam started to glow as well. Big! Ooh-wee! Adam! Mandy screamed. Uh, Adam giggled. <clears throat> he didn't hear her at all. One of the reasons he couldn't hear her was because of all the racket the Myerson's helicopter was making. Nick and Mandy didn't know that Dr. Hendrickson was inside it. And for now, all they knew was that the helicopter couldn't possibly be as dangerous as the guitar was.
tape broke 50 times. <laughs> I don't know. Why did I hunt shame? Because Cyan is being a bugaboo and Mommy came in and lots of things. But we're going to finish the story now, aren't we? Okay, buddy. And Cheyenne's going to sleep over here by us. All right. Then Adam spotted the helicopter, and it delighted him even more than the guitar. Airplane, he said, trying to grab it out of the air. Yeah, Adam, Nick called. Nice airplane. Put the guitar down. Nick is calling to him. Put the guitar down and go get the nice airplane. In the helicopter, Dr. Hendrickson began barking orders. Bring me into range and hold it steady. Wait a minute, Myerson said. If we hit him and he stumbles, he could fall into that whole crowd of people down there. Well, then we'll just have to hope that he doesn't, Aunt Dr. Hendrickson said. Airplane, said Adam. Now, Dr. Hendrickson, said Dr. Hendrickson, and just as Dr. Hendrickson took final aim and fired, the helicopter lunged down and to the right, and the tranquilizer dart hit the guitar in Adam's hands. Scared by the gunfire, Adam dropped the guitar, which went crashing to the ground. <laughs> hey, you, pick on somebody your own size, Mandy shrieked at the man in the helicopter. Adam screamed, no airplane! And giant tears formed in his baby eyes, and his lips quivered, and he began to cry. <laughs> and this was just what Dr. Hendrickson needed. His target was still. Now he could shoot. Hold it steady, he said to Myerson. And at that instant, everything stopped. The rotors of the helicopter had been silenced by a hand, a very big hand. It was a big hand with a nice manicure and a sparkling wedding ring. It was the hand of Adam's mother. Back off, Diane ordered. Uh, yes, ma'am, Hendrickson agreed quickly, and he shut down the engine, and Diane set the helicopter down in the desert quite far away. And then Adam spotted his mother, and he stopped crying and looked up at her, and his, tree, his cheeks were all streaked with tears. But there was a big smile on his face. Being big was fun. He got to play with all kinds of neat things, and ice cream trucks, and moving cars with horns, and electric guitars, but he'd missed his mama, and now she was here. Mama! Is that your mom? Mandy asked, stunned. <laughs> yeah, Nick said because his mom was like over 200 feet tall. 200? Weird family, Mandy said. Come here, baby, Diane said. And Adam ran to see his mother while the ground under him shook and Mandy and Nick were bounced around in his pocket. They even lost their grip on the top seam and tumbled to the bottom of the pocket. They couldn't see Diane, and she couldn't see them, and Diane knelt down on the ground and reached for Adam. She picked him up and gave him a hug, and she kissed his cheek and patted his bottom, and she'd missed her baby as much as he'd missed his mama, and then she cried, too. Everything's going to be okay, Adam. Mommy's here now. Mommy crying, Adam said. It frightened him a little to see that, but Diane reassured him. Yes, dear, Mama's crying, but it's okay to cry when you're happy, and I'm happy to be with you. And she gave him another hug, and that squished Nick and Mandy. Easy, Mom, Nick yelled up at her, but she couldn't hear him. And down below, the scientists were ready. We'd better do it, Dr. Sterling said. The power's ready, are you? <clears throat> Wayne gave him a thumbs-up signal, and they both signaled to Diane. Look at Daddy, Adam, Diane said. Dada! There he is. Daddy's going to take your picture. Smile for Dada. Adam wrinkled his forehead and trying to see his father. He was so small. Come on, Wayne, Diane said. Say cheese, Adam. Wayne flipped the switch. Cheese! Wayne said, and then he leaned down and picked up his very normal-sized two-year-old son from the ground. 
And right after the ga- right after that, he gave his normal-sized wife a hug, and he took Adam from him and hugged him some more. You gave us quite a scare, little man, Dr. Sterling said, tickling Adam, and Adam giggled, but he stayed the same size. I knew you could do it, Diane whispered in Wayne's ear. But these were the words he most needed to hear, and then Dr. Hendrickson sauntered up to Wayne. Well, Zelensky, you pulled it off. Who would have thought it possible? And Diane had a few things she wanted to say to Dr. Hendrickson. Dr. Hendrickson, that looked like a rifle of some sort you had pointed at my baby. They were tranquilizer cartridges, he said. They wouldn't have hurt him, I assure you. Assurances from Dr. Hendrickson didn't mean anything to Diane. Wayne didn't like them either. He held his nose to show just how he felt about the man who had tried to shoot at him, and Diane casually handed Adam to Wayne, and then she did what she'd been wanting to do for some time. She took a roundhouse swing, and she punched Dr. Hendrickson right in the nose, and the scientist fell flat on his back, and he was knocked out like a light. Adam cringed and went, Oh, wee! Never cross mommy, Wayne advised his son. And Dr. Sterling waved to some of the medics who were standing by. Could we have some help over here? Dr. Hendrickson has been overcome with excitement at the prospect of finding a new career. Everything seemed so wonderful, and then Diane had a thought. It wasn't so wonderful. Wayne, the kids, Nick and Mandy, were they, uh, oh no, they were in Adam's pocket. Don't tell me, said Diane. But Wayne told her. He said, Honey, I shrunk the kids. Wayne knew just what to do because he'd done it before. The last time he'd shrunk the kids, he made himself some special equipment so he could find them, and he instructed the police on what to bring from his house. And bring the dog, too, he said. And in the cool desert night, Nick and Mandy sat there in each other's arms in the front seat of the convertible where they had landed when they fell out of Adam's pocket. And on the car radio, a newscaster was giving a full report of what had to be done. And Nick and Mandy had lived through it. They didn't need to listen to it. I I guess your father's about the most famous guy in the world tonight, Mandy said, now that the two of them were being bounced around in Adam's pocket. Mandy wasn't afraid anymore. Now now that the two of them weren't being bounced around in Adam's pocket, Mandy wasn't afraid anymore. In fact, she didn't seem to be afraid of anything, and she cuddled right up next to Nick. And I guess you're about the bravest. Well, Nick blushed. Oh, it wasn't so much. How long do you think it will take before they find us? Mandy asked. I don't know, he said. He hoped it would be a long, long time. And then he spotted something in the rearview mirror, and it appeared to be a very big eye magnified by a lens in front of it. And it was a familiar eye, too. It was his father's eye. You're kind of, uh, well, different, Nick, Mandy said, like your dad. Oh, we're not that different, he said. And he put his arm around Mandy, and he snuggled up to, she snuggled up to him, and the eye pulled back from the car. I guess the world needs people who are different, Mandy said. It needs people who look at things, well, differently, I guess you could say. And that made Nick feel good. You found them, Diane asked Wayne. Nick nodded. But let's give them a few minutes, he said. Diane was suspicious. What's going on, she demanded. Wayne winked at Adam. Adam peered into the little car sitting in the desert and then held his nose. Quark barked, and it was a perfectly normal day. Quark. Quark? Quark barked. Quark. 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 Okay, and it was a perfectly normal day for the Selenskys, and that's the end of the story of Honey, I Blew Up the Kid.